What is up? Jeez, the sun is bright. What's up, guys? Welcome to installing electronic ignition on a 1979 RX-7. We are working on a little stew. If you guys have been following along with the video series, we've got the thing cranking over. We've got the whole interior stripped out. We've got it cleaned. I'm working on putting the new gas tank in it, or at least one from my other car that's not rusty. We flushed the fuel lines. Go check out those videos. But for right now, we're working on the ignition. So, a few things you're going to need and what exactly we're doing. We're converting this car to the 84 to 85 style ignition. Now, that ignition uses igniters mounted to the distributor and then non-resistor coils. So, you can see the remnants of the resistors from this car right here. These resistors, there would have been like three of them. They all go away. You do away with the OEM coils and then you run the late model ignition. Now, if you're just installing this ignition on something completely not a rotary and just random, I have another video that outlines the ignition super clearly. I'm just gonna show it on this car as a process and like how to do it. So go check that one out if you were just looking at the generic wiring. So. What you've got to do first, yank the old distributor out like I showed you, unplug all the wiring from that, do it with the battery out. Here's all the old distributor's wiring. What we're gonna do now is put the battery back in and we're gonna confirm that the coils have positive 12 volts power on the positive side when I turn the key on. The reason you need to do that is because this eight late model ignition, you have to have power to the coils from the key to make the car run obviously but what also you need to make sure of is that that powered switch okay so what turns the coils on is not what turns the alternator on if it's the same circuit that turns the alternator on your car will stay running um, even when you turn your key off because the alternator will stay charging and keep the coils running so if you can utilize the factory coil positives that's good the factory coil negatives though you will have to do away with those Okay, so also your tachometer pulls a signal from, I believe, the negative side of the trailing coil. Okay, so we're going to have to make sure that we keep that same wiring so that our tachometer works. And we'll have to find the signal wire to the tach out here, which I will show you, and then we'll hook that up so we know it works in the car once we get the thing running, obviously. So, I'm going to go ahead and yank these old coils out of here. I've got two new ones that do not require resist resistors that will go in here. And we're going to find and confirm the voltages at the coils. And then I'll show you guys how to wire up the wiring to make this work. So let's get cracking. Go box light. Okay, so I'm not getting any power in my ignition. So we're gonna go in the car and troubleshoot behind the dash in that fuse block where we're not getting power from to see if it's something in there. If not, we will come out here and see if it's one of these relays that's messing up or, or what exactly it is. What's up guys? It's dark. but. Wanted to kind of walk through with you guys what I found for power over here on this 1979 Mazda RX-7. And a caveat I'll make right off the rip is that 1979 had point style ignition, 1980 had electronic ignition, but the igniters were mounted right here on the strut tower, okay, or right here. And then 1981 and later has the ignition that I'm putting on this car, which has the igniters on the distributor, and then resistorless coils, which the 80, 1980 has resistorless coils as well. But with all that being said, this is 79, okay? It has resistors and stuff, or had. When you're over here, the leading coil plugs or buttons all are these black ones, and the trailing coil ones are the blue ones, okay? So when you're looking for power over here on a point-style ignition, they still get 12 volts, okay, to the coil. All right, on the positive side. The negative side is what goes into the distributor to then tell it when to fire. When that coil gets grounded, it shoots a spark out, which goes through the distributor in the cap and then goes to the spark plug, okay? So when you're looking at the wiring on a 79, there's a whole bunch of these little eyelets over here that went to the coils, went to the resistors, etc. 
Okay, all of the ones that come up here towards the coils don't have any power, okay? They get their power from two eyelets that are down lower that come out of the harness down here, okay? Where my fingers are, I'll turn the light on right here. So this wire and this wire. Okay, they come out of the harness where this main fuse block charge harness comes from. All the rest of this stuff up here is pretty much unused when we're going to convert this to the new style ignition, okay? These wires, right, would have gotten their power and then recirculated the power through them from the resistors, right? So, what we're going to do, and I will link the uh, ignition wiring video, but we're going to wire this up just like the 81 to 84s. So how that is, I can explain it super quick and then you guys can go check out the other detail video and then I'm just gonna do it on this car, okay? So you need positive power to each side of the coil that's keyed hot. I like to pull, like I said, these existing ignition wires because they're on a separate circuit from the alternator like I mentioned earlier in the video. So keyed hot, positive side of both coils, okay? And they can share the same positive, i.e. positive and positive of both coils can be bridged, okay? Then you need to run one positive wire or two, one positive wire from the coil, coils, to the distributor igniters, okay? There's a positive terminal on the igniter. You run, they can be bridged together. Again, so one wire to the distributor and then bridge both positives, okay? Now... This is where it gets a little complex. You're gonna need to hook up the negative of the trailing coil to the negative of the trailing igniter, its own wire. Then you need to hook up the negative of the leading coil to the negative of the leading igniter, its own wire. Those two can't touch. Those are the two that send the signal to fire the coil. So that's the gist of how to wire this ignition setup up on here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'll pull this distributor out and spin it so you can see spark happening once I get it all together instead of cranking the engine over, etc. And then I don't know that I'm going to go ahead and simplify all of this wiring. I'm probably going to go ahead and tuck it all up in here. I know that DJ is not going to want it, but for the sake of keeping this project moving, I'm not going to strip this harness out. He can strip the harness out if he wants it cleaned up, So, which I'm sure he'll do, but that's an easy tinkerable thing. So. I'm gonna go ahead and wire this stuff up. Super easy, like I said, go check out that other video. I explained it all in depth on my other car um, from a couple years ago. Super easy stuff. Check that out, guys. We got spark. Okay, so quick explanation of what we got going on here. Turn the lights on and we'll call it a day. Or at night, I guess, because, well, it's dark. So, the new ignition's wired up. You can see the fresh wires here. I pulled the two positive wires from the existing coil harness to turn these on. Bridged them together. We have the one red wire that runs over here. Bridged. The green tape is trailing to match the blue thing over here. Trailing coil. The other one is not marked. Not marked. Leading coil. Now, the distributor has to be grounded for it to work, which is why it's sitting on the alternator. And if I spin, you can hear the igniters firing, right? Which then fires the coils. So, pretty neat stuff. That concludes getting spark on the blue car. Pretty stoked. What you saw as well that I had to do inside the car is the fuse block wasn't distributing power okay so what was happening is that everywhere a fuse was connecting to the car the lights all over here everywhere there was a fuse connecting through the fuse block it was all corroded and nasty i got in there cleaned all those surfaces and it's mint so ready to rip up here we've got all the lights on in the dash now which you can see up there. That's actually a glove box light, like I said just a second ago. And we're ready to go, as far as power. So the cluster's just sitting in there so we knew it works. I did wire the tack up, and that is actually a yellow with green stripe wire. 
and I'm pretty sure that's the same on all the cars, the tack signal. And that comes off the trailing coil, the minus side of the trailing coil, the negative side. So that sums up, like I said, getting some ignition to this car. I'm stoked we got progress made and uh, get fired up because the next step is, well, one, stab the distributor, easy peasy. But two, the fuel system's already been flushed. The fresh gas tank's under it. I got fuel filters. I got a freshly rebuilt carburetor. And that means we're really close to getting this thing fired up. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Loving all the feedback on the series with Little Stu, the Blue RX-7 right here. And uh, like I said, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. Buddy, come here. Come here. You sit. You sit. High five. Okay, or jump. High five. Good job. Good job. Peace, guys.